Welcome back, dear viewers, to the RPG Imaginarium, where here we seek to archive the best traditional gaming stories that the internet has to offer. Today, we have another story submitted by an anonymous poster. The story will be linked in the description. I have a tale to tell, OP. A warning to ensure this horror does not happen to as many people as I can tell. So we started out in our group. Five of us, three girls, two guys. A buddy of mine was the DM and he had this friend. Let's call him Chet. So he brings in Chet to fill out the group to a good six. We start a campaign of Scion, because DM buddy wanted to, and Chet makes a Scion of Aphrodite. Not too odd. Plays a chick, and turns in a Tomb Raider looking pick for character art. Already I am sensing a that guyism, and I look concerned at DM. He just says Chet is a fun guy to play with, so I continue. So the game progresses, and Chet will not stop describing every move his character makes in great detail. How graceful she is, how funny she is. At one point I recall he said his character seductively convinced a gargoyle to do something boobily. All of this coming from this incredibly pale skinny guy with long, greasy, dirty hair, who won't stop giggling. I begged the DM to stop him, but he just said to bear with it. A few more days of this went by, when all hell broke loose. We storm a cult trying to bring out some sort of eldritch horror as cults are wont to do, and Chet seizes the day. His character on a loudspeaker managed to overpower the cultist's wills and stop them from fighting which would have killed us. He then commands all the cultists and their monsters to seize our characters and hold them in a line. I have never seen roleplay this horrifying before. Chet reveals his artifact he's been hiding, a shape-shifting stone. He stands up at the table and begins walking around us. Everyone flinching away from him, he starts giggling again and says, Oh no, nothing will help you now, and immediately rolls to grow a cock. I will never forgive the DM for keeping this game going after this moment, but he opens his trench coat and is wearing his character's tight shorts and sports bra combo as he walks around and begins commanding the imaginary henchmen to strip off our character's clothing. At this point, one of the girls leaves, Everyone else is mesmerized and shocked by the scene in front of us as he takes her leave as permission to start air fondling her character, propping himself up on the table. Chet begins to lick an imaginary neck and make what I can only describe as demonic animal sounds while gyrating on a table. The DM just looks at us and asks what our characters are doing. Too shocked for words, no one responds right away, so in character Chet starts saying, There's nothing you can do. I've had my eyes on you for quite some time looking directly at the guy next to me. Vomiting in his mouth a little bit, he tries to break free, to which Chet stops his defilement of the air in front of him and looks through the rulebook for a spot he bookmarked, and pulls an ability that immobilizes him. He also gets up and leaves, shaking his head and looking for all the world a broken man. Grabbing the two imaginary characters, Chet, from what I saw, forces them both to make out a cultist knife point while trying to get in the middle air fingering with one hand and air jacking it with the other while performing what can only be described as a tongue motion while he was trying to swat flies with his eyes closed and grunting. At this point, everyone else gets up to leave. I look at what ability he is using on his character sheet and come up with a counter. Chet stops immediately, thank whatever gods you want for that. I know I did. DM looks at me like he's expecting something bad to happen, and I roll. As the universe agreed with me by the way of probability, I roll exceptionally well. Chet stops and looks at me. Why did you use that ability? I had to, I said, still not believing this man was real. You only knew to do that because you cheated and looked at my character sheet, you motherfucking maggot. His voice grows from a fake baritone to a shrieking soprano in seconds. You were air-fucking our characters, I yelled back at him. The other people were coming back in, wondering what was going on, shaking with rage, stuffing falling out from his ill-fitting sports bra. He starts yelling at the DM to not let me do this. The DM just holds his hands up in the air helpless. Shaking with rage, he shouts at all of us about not being in character and that we were all horrible role players. As he storms out, I notice he is wearing heels. I have never been so confused as to how such people can exist. He runs back in for his backpack. I notice he is crying, getting his bag up. I try to say sorry. Shrieking in animal rage, he swings his bag at me, but I am too far away. Unbalanced on heels, he trips and his face impacts onto one of the chairs, and he goes down in a pile of furniture and cross-dressing. His bag spills some materials that I only saw as half-finished Pop-Tarts and some sort of hentai. I couldn't be certain. Chet then runs away, sobbing on one broken heel, trailing nose, blood, tears, shame, and horror. I never saw him again. DM asked me not to speak about this incident. 
We don't let him bring friends anymore. 